morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation, startups, the future. No, we're not. We're talking AI, startups, and the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, there's this rumor going around that the newest, hottest, top job in the space of AI is prompt engineer. That's right, folks, prompt engineer. And you've probably heard this word thrown about. It's been thrown about since right about a year ago when ChatGPT 3 first came out. Prompt engineer. And if you think about it, it's kind of like software developer, right? So a software developer sort of sits in between the business person and the machine because the business person goes to the software developer and says, hey, software developer, can you build me an app that's, uh, I don't know, a dating app for libertarian singles, right? And the software developer goes, sure. So it takes that requirement and it and the software developer breaks it down into code to feed to the machine and the machine creates an app based on the code that the software developer wrote. Right? So we have business, you have software developer, and you have the code, the machine. So the software developer sits in between the business person and the machine right so a prompt engineer is kind of like that except the prompt engineer sits in between the business person and the ai right so if you sit down at chat gpt and many of you have you can enter a query right and if you enter enter a query willy-nilly then it's going to give you a willy-nilly response well it depends on what the query is and what prompt engineering is, supposedly, is being taking like that, like that software developer role. If you think about the software developer role, right? We talked about it. Business over here, or sorry, business over here, uh, software developer and machine, right? So the business tells the software developer to do this. Software developer interprets it for the machine. The machine figures it out, creates the thing, hands it back to the business. Boom, you're done. Prompt engineer is the same. Business person, I don't really know what I want. This is what I'm thinking. I want you to write me an article um, which is SEO tested on, I don't know, tiny homes. So you could just go to ChatGPT as a business person and ask for that. But will you get the right thing? Will you get the correct article? Will you get an SEO tested article on tiny homes exactly the same way you want? Maybe, maybe not. You may or may not get exactly what you're looking for. But supposedly a prompt engineer, just like a software developer, is your interface to the bot. So the business person goes to the prompt engineer and say, hey, prompt engineer, can you please write a SEO favorable article on tiny homes in Austin, Texas uh, for seniors. And the prompt engineer, having all of this knowledge of how to manipulate ChatGPT to properly create a response that the business person is looking for, will engineer a prompt and then push that prompt into ChatGPT and then ChatGPT will come out with a beautiful article which is exactly what the business person is looking for. That, supposedly, is a prompt engineer. Now, I think to myself, self, do we really need that person in the middle to be able to help us create the article of our dreams or the content of our dreams? I don't know. I mean, I think that person in the middle does a good job of sort of controlling or figuring out how to control the machine so that it can output the right thing to the business person. 
a prompt engineer has a set of prompts pre-built or pre-engineered that they've used in the past that work really, really well. It's almost like a template if you think about it. They have templates and a lot of them are selling those templates on Twitter slash X for the low, low price of or how to create a business doing this $10,000 a month. Woohoo! These templates to create prompts that go into ChatGPT and supposedly create the most amazing output. Supposedly create the most amazing output. Now, if you ask me, I've done prompt engineering myself. So I, I guess you could put that down in my job description, prompt engineer. But the interesting thing about prompt engineering is that what it does is it puts guidelines around ChatGPT. It puts guidelines around what it can and cannot say to you, right? So you are putting it in a box and you're telling it to work within this box. And unfortunately, if you're telling it to work within this box, then if it's within this box, it's not going to give you things that are outside the box. Because if you're really interested in doing something new and different and innovative and exciting, having too sharp a prompt is not going to allow ChatGPT, the power of ChatGPT, to give you the new innovative ideas that it could use to make your concept better. So if you ask me, if you're a really good prompt engineer, you're putting too many boundaries on ChatGPT to keep it inside this box. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like to prompt engineer. I don't like to create a set of prompts ahead of time and say, hey, this is exactly what I want. I would prefer to have a conversation with it because in the process of having a conversation with it, it may create new connections, new juxtapositions. And I said this before when I did show 749, when I said ChatGPT is my new writing buddy, because I have a conversation with it. And when you have a conversation with ChatGPT, so remove the chat prompt engineer from the middle, have the business person talk directly to ChatGPT and have a conversation with ChatGPT. And when it goes off track, have it tell it to go back on track and it will create the most amazing piece of content you've ever asked for in the interactivity between you and ChatGPT. Not because you've created the most amazingly beautiful prompt to keep ChatGPT in that box. So if you ask me, I mean, people talk about prompt engineering as being, oh, it's a whole new field and everybody needs to get into it. And I'm not so sure about that. I think prompt engineering is a skill that people need to have, but simply having the conversation with, uh, with generative AI, simply talking to ChatGPT or Claude or any of these tools and slowly having it guide you guide each other. I mean, think about it this way. You're, think about it as another person chatting with another person, sort of throwing things back and forth. Instead of being very prescriptive with that person, if you, as if you would with a prompt engineer, telling that person exactly how you want it to look, you would have a conversation with that person. Their ideas could come in and inform what you're trying to do. So do you really need to do strict prompt engineering with ChatGPT and other AIs? No. Is prompt engineer going to be the next hottest job that they're going to be paying you $250,000 to $500,000 a year to do? Probably not. Probably not. So if you ask me, forget about engineering that prompt. Just have a conversation with the damn thing and see what interesting, innovative, new things can come out of that conversation. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.